So you want to render beautiful, frosted, milky white glass just like this. Despite your best efforts, though, it ends up looking something like this. Too dark, not realistic. Face it, you're not fooling anyone with that rap. I wasn't fooling anyone with that rendering. That was My name is Will Gibbons, and today I'm gonna show you exactly how I rendered these straight out of Keyshot, and I'll bet it's a lot easier than you think. Let's go. Before we get into the tutorial, though, let's understand a few things about glass. In this graphic here, you can see that when light comes into contact with smooth glass, some of it will be reflected off the surface, some of it will be transmitted or refracted through the surface, making it look transparent. With frosted glass, on the other hand, you have a rough surface. This is often made by either sandblasting or acid etching the surface of the glass. The result is you get a lot of tiny pits or craters on the surface, and when light comes into contact with it, it will often bounce and scatter across the surface, hitting the glass multiple times before being reflected away from the surface. And as we mentioned before, some of the light will still transmit through, but you're gonna get not a crystal clear appearance, but a cloudy appearance thanks to the roughness on the surface of this glass. So now that we understand that, why when we add roughness to our glass in Keyshot, does it end up looking dark and unrealistic? So this has to do with something called energy conservation, or in our case, black thereof. You see, by default, Keyshot is calculating the light as it hits the surface and bounces off, one time, essentially. This is efficient, and it's good for, say, a glossy material, but in our case, it's not producing realistic results because it is not accounting for all the multiple bounces that should happen across this rough surface. So this would be an example of single surface scattering that Keyshot is performing by default on a rough glass, thus producing a dark result. Earlier I said that when light hits a frosted glass surface, it is likely to bounce from one pit or crater on the surface to another multiple times before it is reflected away from the glass surface. This is because energy in the form of light is being preserved rather than being discarded after a single scatter. As we pursue realism in rendering, we need to account for light as it scatters across these multiple micro facets of a given surface. This is called multiple surface scattering. And if we don't account for the light interacting with all these micro facets, then the result is a material that does not look as bright as it should and even affects the saturation of a given color of a surface. Cool, congratulations. Now that you have a PhD in frosted glass theory, let's bring you on into Keyshot and show you how it's done. To download your free project files, visit willgibbons.com, click on the file vault link and either sign up or log in to enter the file vault. There you'll find links to dozens of project files and hundreds of other product viz resources. All right, so step number one, we're gonna grab that step file from the project files, drag it into the Keyshot real-time view and take those default import settings. What you should see now is our bottle model. To hide everything but the bottle, we'll hold Alt and left click on the bottle. Next, I want to address the composition. So I'm gonna to go to our image up top, go to resolution presets, portrait, which is vertical, and choose three by four. Let's go ahead and set up a basic camera. We'll go to our camera tab. I'll create a new camera. If we go ahead and use the distance slider to get closer, the problem with this is our bottle's too distorted. We wanna go and kind of flatten it out a little bit, and we'll do this by changing the perspective. And I'm gonna go all the way to 140, which is pretty high, but it's going to give us some nice kind of linear appearance on our bottle. The other thing is it's looking a little bit too low. So I'm gonna go and turn on my grid into halves middle mouse button and drag up a little bit to center the bottle. There we go. And I'll go ahead and turn off the grid and save our camera. We're looking pretty good there. Let's go ahead and address that glass material. Double click on our bottle to get to the material settings. You'll see that they are diffuse by default. Now this is where it's a little bit tricky. I know you would think you want to choose glass or glass solid maybe, or maybe transparent plastic, but today we're looking for dielectric. 
Dielectric is a glass-like material that's going to give us the most control over this material's appearance. Now, I want to change the color from blue to a white, but I don't want it to be pure white. I'm gonna go with a 95% gray, which just keeps it grounded in reality. I don't want it to be too crystal clear. So I'll hit OK. If you're looking to take your Keyshot skills to the next level, then check out the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Inside, I share the exact process I've used and refined over the past 10 years to deliver renderings to some of today's most recognized brands, with over 15 hours of content broken into 100 plus bite-sized, beginner-friendly videos. This is the most comprehensive Keyshot course available. When you enroll, you will learn how to turn a boring CAD model into beautiful photoreal images. Stop wasting time searching for tutorials on YouTube and fast track your learning by enrolling in the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Click the link in the description below to learn more and see what other customers have to say about it. And then from here, we can add our roughness. And if I type in 0.1, which is a good starting point, our bottle becomes rough. To get this looking a little bit better, we're going to enable multiple surface scattering. And immediately everything gets quite a bit brighter. The other thing we can do is add some roughness transmission, which is maybe not technically accurate because roughness transmission is scattering the light within the material as opposed to just across the surface. However, if we go ahead and add a small amount, say 0.05, it brightens up the bottle pretty much immediately, which is nice. Uh, we have some work to do on the bottom, but the rest is looking pretty good. Now, if we want, we can increase that roughness to whatever level we want, say point two, and it gets again quite a bit brighter. Keep this roughness transmission pretty low. Don't go too high with it. If you put the same value in you have for the roughness or higher, you'll notice it tends to get a little darker. It uh, just depends. Uh, but again, I, I like to keep this a little lower if I can and add more roughness to the outside. Also, generally the higher the roughness you go, the whiter and brighter the bottle will get. Now let's go ahead and turn on a liquid within here. So if we go and find our liquid, turn that on. Let's hide our bottle and talk about the liquid. For this to work, the liquid volume has to protrude into the surface of the glass. So I modeled it that way. Now, if we double click on this and change it to a liquid material, we can take advantage of the nested dielectrics algorithm in Keyshot, which means we don't need to break these surfaces apart and apply separate materials to them. All we need to do is make sure that we've got the correct refractive index and make sure that our volume our liquid protrudes into its container, the glass. And since I modeled it that way, it is. Now, if we take our refractive index and leave it at 1.5 and turn on our bottle, which is here, I think, it doesn't look exactly correct. And that's because of the refractive index. Our bottle has a refractive index of 1.5 and our liquid also has the same refractive index. So it's not really creating a good result. Anything other than 1.5 will work, but to keep this grounded in reality, we'll take our liquid down to 1.36, which is, I think, a pretty good alcohol IOR. And you'll notice immediately it looks more correct. And of course you can change the color however you want. And you can play with the transparency distance, which will control how saturated and dark it looks. So if I set this value to 50, what we're going to get is a color that pretty much matches the color we've specified over here because this volume is pretty close to 50 millimeters across. I'll go for this kind of warmish color. Now let's go ahead and turn on our little label or uh, wrap up top. I think that's, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna set a plastic material for this. I'll set this to something almost black and I will set the IOR to say two and the roughness to say 0.1. Now at this point, it doesn't look like much. And this is because we have our basic startup HDRI, which is not helping us out at all. It's lacking contrast and it looks too white and gray. Let's get something with some more contrast. And I like to start off with the three panels straight 4K, just give it a double click and it should apply itself. And immediately that looks pretty good. Um, you can dial in your settings here. I think this is too matte. I'm going to take my roughness on the foil to 0 0.05 maybe, 0 0.02. And again, the rest of how this appears is going to largely come down to our lighting. Now, if we go to our environment tab, we can set a solid white color behind our bottle. That should brighten things up a little bit. I'll bring my brightness up a little bit, maybe 1.5 
or so. Now, again, you're really gonna want to place some custom pins around your environment to get the most out of your lighting. If you see that we're blowing out in the neck of the bottle, meaning it's too bright, and then maybe there's some other parts that are a little too dark, let's talk about addressing those now. First thing in our image, or sorry, our rendering tab here, lighting presets, we wanna go down to product, and by going into product mode, we are going to have global illumination enabled. It, it's gonna help everything out a little bit. We get some nice warmth on the ground. And I wanna go ahead and turn on caustics. This will slow things down quite a bit, so just be aware. Now, what about our ground, if we want like a nice reflection or something? Uh, you can go into here and uh, turn on ground re reflections in your environment and stuff. One thing I like to do is actually not use this built-in ground plane. So if I turn those off, we can add a physical ground plane by hitting Control G, as in ground, and immediately we get our ground shadows back, but they're a little grainier. That's because it's a physical ground plane and when we double click on it, we can change its material settings. Let's take our specular value up to white. That gives us our reflection. And then we can play with our reflection contrast here to bring in some more of a mirror-like ground. And I like to add a little bit of roughness on the ground, say 0 0.02 maybe, maybe 0 0.01, just a little bit. And that's looking pretty nice. Now, remember this is looking a little too bright up here near the neck of the bottle. If I go to the image tab, and I create a new image style, we can do that by clicking this button right here. And if I go into photographic style, you will see everything becomes gray. That's because we're doing what's called tone mapping, and we're going from a linear response curve to a low contrast response curve. We can also go to a high contrast response curve. They're, these are like presets. So what I like to do is go in here, and if I'm in low contrast, now we're avoiding those bright white areas. This will work both for metals and glass really well. And then you can play with the curve to adjust these values. So if I want to bring back a little bit of brightness, we can. We can play with our whites and kind of increase that a little bit. We can play with our lights, play with that value a little bit. And notice the bottom of the bottle is lightening up quite a bit too, which is really nice. We can also take those mid-tones, maybe drop those a touch, maybe bring up our shadows, play with those. And we can also take our contrast and play with that a little bit too. Now, I know what you're thinking. The background is looking awfully gray. We can fix that by going down to our under layers and turn on solid background color white. Check that box there. And now our bottle's looking quite a bit nicer. And we can just play with our contrast and our exposure a little bit more. Maybe bring those whites up just a hair. And again, the rest of what we need to do to really improve this is go into our HDRI editor and play with our lighting more so than anything else. Uh, the other thing you can do with color is if you lose some of your color because you're in this uh, photographic image style, you can go and bring back some of that saturation or vibrance or just do that in the material settings as well. So at this point, I wanna show you the exact settings I used in producing the results I showed you at the beginning of this video. And we're gonna do so by going into some studios I created with the previous versions of these. So if we go over and hit U to enable our studios, and if I click on Studio 1, we should see the bottle that I did earlier. So here's our white bottle. Let me go to one with a little bit of color. This one's got our yellow, which is really nice. Uh, this one's got this kind of dark black inky color. And this one's got the kind of translucent sort of beige color. So let's take this example here. How did I end up getting the nice bright color down at the bottom of the bottle, as well as this nice glow in the middle? If we go to our environment settings, you can see I created a custom HDRI. So it's got a right pin, a middle pin, a left pin, and a rear pin. So if I turn all of these off, you can see step-by-step step how I built this HDRI. We still have the same background that we did in the three panels straight 4K. You can see uh, I really didn't do much with this here, but I went ahead and played with the pins. So let's turn on the left pin, and you see that it illuminates like half of the bottle. So it's hitting the, the, the left side of the bottle, but then it illuminates the right side of the bottle because the light moves through the liquid and the glass. And the settings for this pin, nothing crazy. I left these at the default, 40 and 70. I made it a little bit brighter. One nice thing I did was change the fall off to exponential. That looks a little bit more natural. See, if I go to circular, 
it has a bit more of a harsher effect and it doesn't, the fall off isn't quite as fast. I think exponential looks a lot more realistic and a little more subtle. And my fall off is set to 0 0.05, so a tiny bit of fall off. That's really it. Then we have the right pin, and that basically is the same as the left pin. So just by having these two pins, I've illuminated both sides of the bottle evenly, and the bottom is nice and bright. If one of these pins gets moved over, you will see that we lose the highlight down below. Having these pins in place addresses the bottom of the bottle as well as the middle. If I turn on the uh, center or the middle pin, that's this core highlight right here that gives us some shape. I don't want the bottle to be too flat, so we have a nice highlight that's off center. And this one also is exponential fall off, the same amount of fall off. It's just elevated, so it's lifted a little higher to hit this curve here. It's a little bit skinnier, but that's pretty much it. And then we have a rear pin, and when I turn that on, that just gives the center a glow. So if I turn everything off but the rear pin, you can see the rear pin is right in the middle of the back, giving it that nice soft glow, the gradient. And I use this same lighting environment with all the same settings for all three, or sorry, four different variations of this bottle. Uh, if we go to our image styles, you can see I created an image style that has different settings. I stayed in linear response mode instead of low contrast, and I just played with all these settings to get it the way I wanted. So if we turn off the curve, you can see that's what it looks like normally. Uh, I used a little denoise because without it, it can be a little grainy. And then I've got bloom on, again, very, very small settings, but bloom is going to give it just a bit of a soft sort of a glow to it. Tiny bit of chromatic aberration, not really important. And then that background color, that white background color is important too. If I look at the ground plane, um, I've got the shadows were made a little bit brighter. So instead of black, I just lifted that up to 70 to make it a little bit brighter. We've got a little bit of roughness, refractive index a little bit higher, and then reflection contrast is all the way at one. So without it, doesn't really look good. With it, looks perfect. And finally, if you're curious about how I set up all these different studios, those are pretty simple. The tricky thing, or the thing that may look a little crazy is if I double click on this bottle material, you'll see that we've got a multi-material for each bottle. And the only thing that changes on it is the actual label I made. And when we go into the material graph settings, it looks a little bit crazy and intimidating. Uh, I'll let you discover or dive into this on your own if you're a little more advanced but basically we're using four different labels with some slightly different settings. We've got a displacement map for these bumps on the bottom of the bottle. We've got a lot going on here, but that's how I was able to create a studio that just cycles through each individual uh, bottle. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If so, you know what to do. Drop a like, make sure you're subscribed, and until next time, happy rendering.